So mean. like here, it, it obviously looks like it's not windy or little wind. That, that's pretty correct. But you're doing quite fast, right? Yeah. Usually it's a little bit easier if you have ton, 10 knots or 12 knots of wind or even 15, then things go pretty automatically and you can get a lot of speed. Of course, it can get scary if it goes over 20, 22, 23 knots, 24 knots. It's a bit scary, you have to get used to it. But actually what's really interesting is that that wind was low, maybe 6, 7. We looked it up later at, uh, at the Geneva airport, they measure the, the wind. And they, they showed around 6 to 7 knots of wind. Mm -hmm. And I, I used a watch to give me the tracking. And I was doing up to 17 knots of of boat speed. And I never believed that I could beat the wind by a factor of two plus. This is impressive. So, uh, especially when the wind is kind of, you need you need seven knots, six, seven knots, maybe eight is a bit easier to get out. But mm -hmm. when you're out, it really starts building. Mm -hmm. And if you manage to stay out, you're really, really happy flying downwind. And you, you, you have basically the, the sail setting is like that one. The, uh, the main, main your apparent wind is very yeah, much yeah. forward. Because the main sheet is pleated in, but like a, like a, like upwind uh, course, mm -hmm. a little bit open, not too tight. And, and the traveler, is a bit the traveler, open? traveler is in the, is middle. In the middle. I don't touch that. It's in the middle, and as well with the coat, I sheet it in more and more, and not too much. Mm -hmm. Then you kill your speed. But it's not a huge difference from upwind about mm -hmm. from the same set because you, you train so much own speed compared to the wind speed mm -hmm. and then you really fly by all other boats can you manage that there were no boats left because the wind was not so exciting for most sailboats to be out okay but i was i was okay. with my weight forward i try to bring a speed in the boat I can kind of feel that the 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 the, the hull will start lifting, but before that happens, I bear away a little bit mm -hmm. and go backwards, so that it doesn't really keel. Mm -hmm. It goes flat, but comes up forward, and as, then you realize it, it wants to come out, and then when it comes out, I love again to get the power and go go forward. How would you describe your sailing skills? I would say a good, a good hobby sailor. So I, I sail catamarans maybe since 10, 15 years. Conventional catamarans. I can sail a Janaka. It needs to be alone in a trapeze and steering. Uh, I can control these boats, but uh, oiling is a little bit different because you, you, have, you have kind of control the speed and all that, but as well your flight time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that needs a bit of practice, but that both helped me to learn it and get that feeling. Mm -hmm. So I, by no means I'm a professional sailor, but uh, I get the feeling needed. But Any thoughts about how to position this boat with some others that you might have tried in the past? Yeah, I... I I tried different foiling boats. There are some foiling boats which are just beyond my skill level and they are too, too dangerous and risky for non-professional sailors. They're not necessarily faster because you, you don't foil long distances. Like I tried a flying Phantom, a great boat, but you have to really be very, very, very strong and you have every maneuver you have to work, same with the Narca 20, these are big boats, they're very wide difficult to handle and then they don't fly as easy of course if you look at the, the top professionals they fly perfectly but I would have a, a real problem to fly them controlled and in that wind they wouldn't fly at all I believe they're too heavy for that then you have this single-handed boat like an egg hunt which is not made for foiling in my opinion because uh, the class rules prevent you from having a flight control system and you have to put in the, the, the dagger boats from, from top and that just just doesn't allow you to have the right form as a foil to make it stable foiling. So you ha again, you have to be extremely good sailor to make it foiling stable and they're not faster. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they're any faster 
Of course, if you put a professional set on a cab and me on my my iFly, he might beat me. Mm -hmm. But put my kind of sailing skill or put a professional on an iFly against a professional on an a cab. I don't think that the a cab will win because in the long run, you will have a problem to fly the thing stable, maneuvers and all that. Same as on Raka 17. I think it's even more difficult because you have two people, you have to synchronize, you have to train and all that. Mm -hmm. All these boats are great, but for a very small niche. And mm -hmm. here you have a boat which I find you can sail in light winds on the lake, uh, but you can sail waves. We have sometimes very strong winds. We have, uh, I've sailed it at 20, 25 knots of wind speed with nasty short waves. It goes over the waves, you're not getting wet. Of course, if you capsize, if you make a mistake, you get really wet. But it, it is a boat which is has a huge variety mm -hmm. what you can do with it. And it's very, very performant and very reliable, mm -hmm. good quality. So I think it was a, for me, it was the best choice of a foiling boat I could could make. Best in the market, in my opinion. <laughs> Capsizing them than foiling, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elego. Euh, 1,50 m. Concentration. Ouais, C'est bon. Et voilà. Parfait. Bravo Charles Pas facile And then you can go from boat to boat and I can put fingers on solutions where I say this we can do better. Yeah. So we speak a little bit about boat. Yeah. How about that? That's perfect. Is that a plan? 
Charles is going on the water, he's uh, improving on his technique to ride yeah. the boat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a nice day for a swim.